Okay, hello everybody. I am Badrich and this is the prompt honk and I think we can wrap this prompt uh, series up here. Mm. So I was doing some benchmark tests here. I think we can get back to this in at the end of the video. Mm, let's go here. Yeah, I would also like to just say Stefan Jernstål is also a good musician. I forgot to say so in the last video, but of course he is since he's a member of the Mats and Morgan band. So let's paste that there. Okay, in this video we will do some uh, refactoring and include our new methods of cr generating the path and uh, make some other small uh, improvements to the prompt generator and of course add colors here depending on how long the execution time is. So I will start here by adding a shebang to this prompt generator file which is uh, uh, not needed at all since we are so we always source this file we don't execute this as a script we source it into bash rc but i do it here just to get shell check uh, uh, stop complaining because it will if i don't have a shebang then i want to move these to helper functions uh, you know the trap and uh, the timestamp command here uh, to the bottom of, of the file instead since they are yeah like static functions that we will never probably not uh, modify i like to keep this uh, on a as a one line and i know this this might look really stupid to have a function where the function name is longer than the function <laughs> body but uh, we have that anyways one thing to keep in mind here uh, when you're creating one when you're writing a function like this on one line you can do it but it's important that you have a space after the opening brace and uh, a semicolon before the closing one you don't need a space here but i just think it looks better um, then we can um, uh, do this here instead it will be a little bit shorter uh, to write it like this and more consistent of my normal uh, uh, um, style and it's also a thing that um, Emmanuel pointed out in his uh, comment that we talked about in the last video uh, but we can actually do and, and this function here timer start that is only executed from this debug trap here and it's totally fine to add this here if we wanted to and I think I want to do that because yeah it's a, we, we, we are still at 47 characters and, and then we can get rid of this function altogether saving us three lines in our uh, uh, file here okay let's get back here <clears throat> I have found out that we can get the way we're just using one of these arithmetic tests here and this is one thing that i was benchmarking and they actually take some time they take about uh, five to ten milliseconds to do one of these uh, arithmetic tests so if we can get away with just using one that's very good so let's remove these two Re let's rename this one to milliseconds here or ms uh, and to get the milliseconds uh, direct directly we just divide here with one million and that will do the same thing also I, uh, or, yeah let's put an underscore here in uh, prefix the timer variable with an underscore uh, because uh, I think um, or since it's a global variable, I think it's very good to, to prefix them with underscore or to make it uh, clear that it is a, a global var variable and then we need to use an underscore here and here. But now Shellcheck complains here that this uh, uh, variable is uh, uh, referenced but not assigned. But it actually is so to get rid of that warning. Uh, it, uh, this also, it doesn't matter, it will work without this, but here we set timer to a default value, which is null if it's not uh, uh, assigned. 
also like to declare uh, ms variable here as local on this line and then we can do this make it a little bit shorter nicer nice okay this we will not need that we will uh, uh, convert it to seconds only when we need to we don't need to do it here every time we run the prompt generator uh, time string uh, that is fine but or it's not fine because we will remove the variable time string and rename it ms instead and then we can use the same variable it's totally fine to do so here here's another thing that the, uh, emmanuel pointed out that we could set ifs here to local and then we don't need to make this backup because then it will not uh, be known outside of the prompt generator function here so that's very good <coughs> Then we have this part that generates uh, the path and here we will do two things one is that uh, uh, let's see here this is the current directory i'm in now and uh, let's say i'm echo uh, and do some other commands most of the time you don't change directory and that means we don't need to generate a new short uh, version of the current directory we could just use the old the uh, the last uh, path string that we generated so um, we do that first here we test if uh, the path has, has changed at all so if uh, the working directory is equal to um, uh, last prompt path then uh, we can set path string to the variable last prompt string or something right? whatever it doesn't matter what we name this or it it's good to have these long uh, na verbose names here for these variables because these will be global also and that means uh, in one way this timer here maybe we should name it prompt timer yeah let's do that actually prompt timer or t prompt or something wh whatever because what, what i want to say is that uh, you know we source this uh, uh, file here new prompt into our bash rc Meaning that if we create a global variable in this uh, in this file, it will be global in the bash rc, meaning it will be more or less an environment variable uh, available in all shells and stuff, you know, so uh, It's not good to, to have like global variables here that are named ms or something like that 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 would uh, we, we could very easily overwrite it and, and it can cause all kinds of problems so it's uh, good to have verbose names uh, for the global variables here um, there but now this last prompt path and last prompt string those uh, um, those variables doesn't uh, exist yet But we, we create them here when we generate a new uh, prompt string or path string uh, we can uh, uh, save, save them here in these global variables so uh, last prompt string is equal to path string and last prompt path is equal to pwd which is the current directory and then it will know the next time it, it executes uh, the prompt generator it will test if the current working directory is the same as the last one so that's uh, a, a, a nice uh, improvement here <coughs> and then we have this loop uh, uh, this loop which we use our new method so we don't uh, so so we will automatically get the first uh, alphanumeric character by using the uh, regular expression uh, test that we talked about in the last video we'll copy paste it from here yeah let's take this whole thing here right uh, there 
we do it like this instead. Uh, and this is a bit different uh, inst uh, instead of using, yeah, whatever, we do it like this. Here we can see I have written PS and that is actually path string because I like to call a uh, path string PS here instead. Makes it shorter, it will be better uh, in, in the when we generate the PS1 here because that will be quite long here when we add the color variable names and stuff later. So it's good to have these short variables and I think it's totally fine to, to have short variable names, uh, uh, local variable names, especially if you do something like this and add nice comments uh, at the beginning of the function then you th then it's n totally fine to use cryptic short uh, variable names you can also see here dchar we don't need that anymore if we do it like this uh, because uh, we don't in, in the previous version of the prompt we we needed to store uh, the dchar before uh, appending it to the path string because we needed to test if dchar was a dot or not but now we, we will always uh, we, we don't need to do any tests on dchar so we can actually remove that variable we can remove that whole line since we have this here now um, but we got a uh, got an issue here uh, when we are doing it this way it will always uh, append the slash here now uh, to the path. So if we would comment this out just to show you what's going on and maybe we should uh, just test it for uh, science, you know. There. Yeah, it seems to work. Uh, but as you can see, we get a trailing slash for every directory. And to remove the trailing slash, we could just do this, you know. If we bash rc now and then go to cd, no, oh, cd slash then, yeah, cd. Now it removes uh, the slash, but as you could see, when I go to the root directory, then it will remove the slash there, there as well, and because it, but since it's the only character, uh, it will, um, we, we get a blank uh, path string here, which we don't want, so I don't know what's the smartest way to do this is, uh, but uh, I think this is fine. Here it will test if uh, if ps path string is equal to a slash, uh, then this test is, is true. If it's false, remove the last slash of the string with this, and, uh, and then it will work. Here we, we can get back to this later. <coughs> and now we have uh, uh, an optimized uh, version of, of, of this that is more or less foolproof with this all known test. Uh, I have also, when I did my benchmarkings, I saw that it's faster to not use uh, groups. Uh, it's not, it, it, it's very, very small difference, but if you compare like 10,000 directories like I did then it piles up you know whatever yes so this is this is good I think then we have this time color here and that's what we're gonna do now I have here this uh, file by the way prompt fine here this is what I will upload to github after I have done this video uh, and uh, add the link in the show notes so you can uh, you can get this script yourself and, and try it out and and, and uh, uh, have some fun with it but I recommend that you try to uh, write this uh, by hand, by yourself instead, because uh, as I have mentioned, it's a very good exercise in bash. Uh, here, this is uh, how I uh, you add colors here. What we need, all we need to add colors to our prompt is these weird escape codes here. So here is the escape co code for red. I think uh, we might have talked about this before, but let's, if I copy this uh, raw escape code here and paste it into uh, our PS here, we can paste it here at the beginning and I think this will work. Yes, now it's red, but now you can see everything is red, not just the prompt, the output and uh, the input and everything is red. 
and now also uh, now it works whatever there we go. Yeah, yeah whatever <coughs> uh, uh, uh. so this is how, how you add colors just typing this, you know, it's super easy. You can uh, no, it's not. It's it's really difficult to to remember how to write these weird escape codes. You need to, yeah, whatever. So it's um, there are a couple of, of ways we can do this. A simple way is to just create variables with these uh, uh, escape codes, and then we can use uh, instead of writing it like that, we can use now C red here instead. Then you just add that to uh, PS one. And I like to, to write them like this uh, inside color braces just to be sure that they expand properly. I, I think you, you don't have to do it. Now we, we should get the same, same thing here. Mm, to reset the color, we, you, you can use, there's another escape code that will reset all uh, formatting, meaning if you have set the, the colors or, or if you have changed uh, from the normal to bold text, because you can do that also. Then there's this uh, default escape code, which looks like this. Uh, so if we add that after uh, the time string here, then only the time string should be red. And it is, and now the text is normal there, you can, as you can see. But let's talk a bit about these uh, uh, different ways of, of defining the colors because even if this is much more convenient than directly entering these uh, escape codes, storing the escape codes in a variable, there's an even uh, uh, easier way and that is to store the output of teapot. Uh, and with teapot you can set the foreground and, and background and you can, you can do a lot with teapot. It's, it's a really cool little thing. But this is uh, these two are equivalent uh, set, uh, doing this, but teapot itself it's it's a little program it's a little command you know so here it took uh, ten milliseconds to execute that teapot command now it just took three four but it's it's a command that takes some well it takes some time <laughs> to do this and we can actually see the difference here. Now I'm using teapot to set these variables, and if I resource bash rc now, we can see it took 20 milliseconds, 22, 23, 24, 23, so around 23 milliseconds. If we instead set the hard-coded values and resource bash rc, now 10, 8, 8, 9, 6, 9, 6, so around 8 milliseconds when, when we are uh, not using teapot. A difference of about uh, 12 to 15 milliseconds and that's that is something you know and, and, and there you can see how, how how easy it is to to bloat this to make your prompt slow now this and, and this is the the most important thing is to add these color uh, variables here outside of the prompt generator so uh, this is entered directly into bash rc uh, and that's why i've written them like environment variables um, but there is a middle ground here because, and I, I recommend this way to defining the colors here, to uh, have set variables, uh, the same same thing, and use teapot. But here, since we are doing this thing, it will only set set uh, set the variables to the teapot output if uh, the variables are undefined which uh, they aren't now. So if I resource now, the, the variables already exist in bash rc, so it will not use this teapot. And you can see now we are we have the same nice execution time. So this is a good uh, compromise and the way that I recommend you use. Um, last now, we need to... We, we want different, uh, different uh, color of... Um, the time depending on how uh, long the command was and another thing is that if i sleep here for two seconds now we can see it says 2004 we wanted to say 002 because it's uh, yeah it's two seconds you know i got this uh, here as well and it's a bit 
this is a very unorthodox way of writing a case uh, clause, but it's I think it's good, uh, at least in this uh, place here. We do it before we do the printf formatting of, of the time. Um, and yeah, here we are doing one of these ternary expressions, you know, that we talked about in, I don't know if it was the last or, or the video before that. Uh, this could be written on one line like this. But here you can see how, how weird it gets when, when, when you have all of this. It's really, even if it's a simple ternary thing like, like it is here, it's, it's, uh, it's not fun to, to read and modify this. But you can write them in a nice way like this. You don't need backslash or anything here uh, if you want to continue the line when you're inside these double parentheses here and doing this. And what we are doing here is comparing ms, if that is less than 20, return 1. Um, if it's less than 100, return 2. And it will work like this. So if this test pass here, uh, then it will return 1 and it will not uh, do any of these. It will, so this doesn't take time. It's not like it does uh, uh, six different tests here every time. But it will actually do that if the time is more than 1. Uh, more than 999 then it have to test all of these uh, but it's still very fast since it's part of the same ternary expression it's it's great to do it like this it's actually i don't know i think it's the the, the most efficient way to do this um, and here we can also see if it's more than 999 then it will set it to six uh, and depending on what uh, this ternary expression returns, uh, uh, which will be a number bet between 1 to 6. Uh, we, we get down here to the case uh, where we set this uh, time, time color uh, variable to one of the uh, global col color variables here. And if it is 6 uh, or something else for some reason, but it should never be anything other than 1 to 6. Then we will set the color to red, but we will also divide uh, the milliseconds with 1000. And since bash doesn't support uh, floating point numbers, we will get the whole seconds here. So if I would divide here, this is 2004 uh, milliseconds. If I divide that with 1000, we will get 2, not uh, 2.004. Since we don't, it doesn't support uh, floating point numbers, it, it would just round it. <coughs> So this is fine, and now n now we get the the different colors here depending on the time. We can just change that here to T C instead, and now there we have green text. Let's do a sleep one second or uh, hundred milliseconds, two hundred milliseconds, three hundred milliseconds. You see, we get different times or different colors. Uh, depending on the time just as we have here so now we are done with with this um, as I mentioned in the beginning I, I um, try wa wanted to make sure that I don't show you anything stupid here uh, so I wanted to make some a couple of tests here so I changed this prompt test to have these different prompts this is uh, yeah this is how the prompt uh, or the path string conversion looks looked uh, uh, before this video. The method we use there. This is the old version that I that I was that I have been using for two years before starting making these <laughs> this little video series. Uh, and this is uh, the method that we use now with the all num uh, character class and stuff. Uh, and then I have made. And this is the full prompt uh, as, as it is now. Mm, and at the bottom of this script here, uh, I've added some stuff so you can so we can test test this. So if if I would test here the old prompt here, for instance, then we can just do prompt test, and it we we get nothing because we are in the root directory and we didn't. Uh, take that into consideration uh, so let's do prompt test here and now it prints the short path here 
we can see it took eight milliseconds. We can do it again, we can do it again. Just to, to get an idea of how fast it is. That's the old prompt. Or that that was this version, I guess. This is what we had uh, before uh, this video. You can see it's actually it's slower. Uh, on average, it's slower than uh, my old version. <laughs> A little bit. A couple of milliseconds. Three, four milliseconds slower. And our newest prompt uh, with the newest method with the all num test and stuff. It's. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's almost. I guess it's slightly faster than uh, what we had before this video, but it's still it's slower than the old one. <laughs> but the old one didn't work. There were some errors, and it was stupid code. Also, I don't I, I I don't know why it's faster. We have this weird array and stuff here. It should not be, but and we do extra tests in the loop, and I don't know. For but it is <laughs> it is the fastest. I don't know why. Uh, and of course, uh, this is not a good way to test, so so uh, I wrote this little thing here uh, to use find uh, and then take all the directories in .config uh, recursively, which is about uh, 575 directories or something, and then you can do this, and that now it will run this prompt test on each and every directory there, and then you get a, a better average. Uh, we could also do this just to see how many there are. Uh, no. Ah, ls uh, wc. Okay, so this time the print zero. There are 572 uh, directories. Mm. Then we can run the test here. 572, uh, and it takes 4.5 uh, seconds to do that on, on with our new newest version of the path uh, conversion. But when when you do this, you will get uh, quite different times here. Now 3.6. That's a that's a one second difference. You know, I don't know why you get such different results here. 4.3. But I would say that it's an average of, or I don't know, maybe 8 milliseconds or something to do this. <coughs> or maybe more. It's, it's not completely fair also, this test, you know, since it's executing a new, a new uh, script and stuff here. But you get a sense, and, and, and uh, it's good if you have a couple of ways here to compare. If we compare it here with the old prompt. See what results we get here. Yeah, that was slow. That was the slowest uh, by far of all tests we have done here. 5.8, 5.8. Yeah, now it looks like the old prompt is slowest. I I, I don't know, but they are very similar. All, all of them. It's it, it's like none of them are are re are, are stupid and bloating it. But whatever. What did we test? we do last prompt I don't know we can also do the full prompt and here I use a fake fake timestamp here uh, uh, because it it gets weird with the debug uh, thing but otherwise it, it, it this will actually generate the full prompt uh, and calculate the time but here it and this is such an this is seconds that because it's such an old timestamp I'm, I'm using here now that means it will always do all of the tests here till it gets here and, and it will also do this conversion every time so this is the slowest uh, version of the prompt when, when you have to convert it to seconds uh, uh, and that's good that it's slowest when it's seconds then it doesn't really matter if it takes uh, five milliseconds more or less when when you're you are still rounding the number to seconds so whatever but uh, and as you could see it wasn't that slow actually. Six seconds here to, to generate the prompt for uh, 500 uh, directories or 500, almost 600 directories. But this is what I've been doing here, uh, testing this stuff out. 
And my conclusion is, it doesn't really matter that much uh, what we are doing here. We are, since we are using as so few um, external commands, we do this date command, but most of it is internal uh, tests and we, we are not doing many tests either. Another thing is that uh, when I run these tests, every path is new. So we'd have to generate the, the, the uh, short path here for every prompt. Uh, but uh, when we are actually using our prompt, uh, we will not uh, generate the path. Most of the time we can use the last prompt string here and then we can get rid of this whole part here, which is about yeah 10 milliseconds. So it's after, and, and that is like ha half, half of the prompt is, is just generating this. Uh, path string whatever uh, I feel like I've been babbling a lot there uh, I don't know if I yeah let's we, we can just uncomment it here so because I, I, I was uh, trying some things out you can do this you know now if we go back here Ah, that's right, we have this prompt expander here. Let's remove that one. There, reload. Now, it expands the last uh, directory of, uh, of the path. So it will shorten every, every directory, but not uh, yeah, the, the leaf directory. And that, that is a nice... Uh, nice uh, thing too and uh, the compromise you know uh, if, you, if, if you really don't like this I personally I think I will stick to this uh, shortening all of them because this is also important you know the smartest thing the, the least bloated the fastest way is to not use this prompt generator at all just uh, create a, a PS1 that you're happy with that doesn't use any weird functions or anything Use the built-in bash things, you know, backslash uh, w, backslash u, and so on. And that will, of course, be the fastest. But I really like this compact uh, uh, way of, of displaying the prompt. Because that means that I will need to resize uh, my windows uh, 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 much less, you know. And that also takes time, even if you do it super fast with a keyboard, you know. If you, if you don't need to resize the window as many times just because your prompt is not uh, occupying 50% of your screen real estate, you know, that, that, that's also something to keep in mind. Um, and this displaying the time, yeah, as you have seen here now, it's really good to, it, it's useful. Uh, I, I find use for it all the time. It's not just, uh, this is not just like rising because it looks cool, you know, the, this is something that I... Uh, find uh, a lot of use for I like uh, and uh, yeah I will not stop using this but it's whatever thank you for watching everybody have a great day